So I'm inside the largest car park on the tube at Epping Station and behind me is locomotive L11 with a restored signal cabin, which is very cool. when these were made right. these were two separate trains and they used to run the Piccadilly line okay. between Hounslow and Cockfosters oh. don't forget it didn't go to Heathrow in those days okay. <laughs> now they got to be about 30 years old in service so the end of the 50s early 60s they were starting to break down they were going wrong Engine a joint here. Welded back together again. Why did they do it? Because they needed two motors. Two motors, yes. Because you'll, as you'll know from Acton, it's quite a steep gradient getting up into. Oh, there if they wish. Okay. Somebody can sit on the drive seat. Please come on in. Very basic. It's a bit like an automatic car. Mm. You had a brake and you had a throttle. And that was it. Separate. As you pointed out, the grey handle is the brake. Now, at the moment, the brake is in the off position. So pull, right. it, pull it towards you. Which one? The grey one, that one. Now, feel that first notch. That's the equivalent of a car handbrake. Right. You put that on when you're in a station to stop the train running away. Uh -huh. oh. Okay. Now, if you pull it more towards me, that's more braking, more braking, keep coming. And that's all the way over there, that's the emergency brake. That's right. the same as in a car pulling your foot really hard on the exactly, brake. Exactly, yes. Obviously, the passengers would be thrown about behind you that's back right. in the days. So that was the brake. So put it back to the parking position. There we go. Oh, no, that's good. Now, the other controller is this. Oh. This is called the dead man's handle. Mm. You push it down. You push it down. And then you turn it towards you. That's about a third power up. Now you let go. Oh. So you have to start from scratch again. Oh, so it's to the zero good. position. Now, what you did when you let go of it like that, you would have immediately put the emergency brake on. Yeah. It lets all the air out of the air braking system. It would stop the train and it would take over five minutes for the air compressor, air compressor okay. to build the pressure back up oh, again. Oh, wow. So not only did you stop your train for five <laughs> minutes, everybody in the train is behind you <laughs> I'm is stuck for five minutes oh, as well. No. So you would not have been a popular driver. Oh, <laughs> so yeah, now it's exactly the same with that as it would be with a car. If you've right. got a powerful car, you put it in bottom gear and Good. you hit the accelerator, okay. you don't go anywhere, you right. just burn rubber oh, well, okay. same thing with the train yeah with a very powerful electric motor you would just spin the wheel so you started slowly and as the train speed went up you took it all the way right. around and that keep going keep going that's full power wow okay. Okay. now back in the day that would get you up to probably about 60 miles an hour. wow wonderful 60 but miles you per wouldn't yeah. know why Where's the speedometer? Okay. okay. There's no speedometer no speed in meter. any tube train <laughs> until the 1938 tube train stop really? came out. So the, that's just air pressure, that one. Right, the air pressure, that's yeah. for the doors yeah. and for the brakes. But there was it's no wonderful. speedo. You had no idea how fast you were travelling in a train when you were driving it until the late 1930s. Oh. But that was it. That's oh, the controls. Gosh. Perfect. Oh, this is wonderful. Very, Amazing. Very basic. If we've got time, shall I show you the passenger absolutely, compartment absolutely. through there? Please. Okay, we're shunter. There were seats all the way along here. Oh. These are the heaters. Oh, okay. They left those in. <laughs> but they took the seats out. There used to be the armrests. Right. The armrests have gone. Okay. But I don't know if you remember that there used to be strap hangers. These little holes here, there was a spiral. This holds that strap on here. They used to hold them when you were standing. And, right, right, yeah. right. That, that's where they came from. Oh, okay. They blanked out the windows. They left the air conditioning units in. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that, come on, this is 1931. That's an air conditioning unit. Air conditioning okay. unit, yeah. <laughs> 
and if nobody pinched it, there was a box of matches alongside it, and that was the emergency that light. That was the emergency. <laughs> oh. emergency now, wasn't that a fire waiting to happen? Back in the days, they covered the seats with fabric that burnt. They had wooden... Right, here's a heritage bus for the Epping Onga Railway. We are departing Epping Station. Yeah, now we are. And the reason why I'm on this bus is because I'm heading up to the Epping Onga Railway. Hey, to describe why it is kind of pointless. This station, that's the plug for the Essex Way on the house part. Was it moving? They did just pull up. Was it moving? Yeah, the tracks do continue further up towards North Weald and Onga. Part of the Central Line closed in September Here is the station building of a former tube station known as North Weald. Uh, it closed in September 30th, 1994. It says LNER buses to Epping. And inside you have trains. Oh, Green Line Coach and Country Bus Services. A wonderful old signal cabin. And, I mean, that way is towards Cooper Cell and Epping. I'm on platform two, and you've got nice old semaphore signals. And this does not feel like a tube station at all after its closure. Feels more vintage. So you, you also got an old Anglia Railways Mark III coach. Uh, class 40, pretty sure it's a Class 40 BR Blue livery. And that way is towards Onga. This station feels incredibly different than other London stations. But that's an exaggeration because we're not in London. And this shot feels like a portal. 
Because you have daylight on one side with trees making up a tunnel. They're going to pass the token. Class 47? Oh, you got an old 1959 tube stock here. That looks cool. And you can still ride one of those on the Alderney Railway in the English Channel.
incredibly well designed for the area. And we're off. At 2.45 p.m. I came here by about 2 o'clock. I had to wait 45 minutes. And we're leaving North Wales Station. And usually you have to get out here. Because the line between North Wales and Epping is abandoned. SCR 1959 tube stock. Oh. Class 43. Class 31. Oh. Class 101. <laughs> But in the future, the EOR has a proposal to connect it with the centre line by a new station known as Epping Forest, or the more better name, Epping Glade. But I prefer this heritage railway to be converted back into tube use by reinstating the old Lake Hall station, which was one of the stations closed in September 1994. But we'll then approach the next stop, Lake Hall, but we're not going to stop there because it's abandoned. Yeah, this is all farmland. It's like so many farm vehicles are here just bring the same irrig irrigation necessary for agriculture like that one there it's mowing the crops and in a few moments I think we'll pass by Blake Hall station They normally run the steam trains on this line, but say there are a few cancellations, so they're running this diesel one instead. It's fine, because I prefer diesels and the steamies. So, but steamies are good. Steamies are good. And I see all Roadmaster buses. And this is Blake Hall Station we're passing now. Oh, brand new pool, new house area. I mean, before in one of the Londonist videos, there used to be tube randles flanking the station, but I'm pretty sure they've been removed. Which 
Okay. All right, we're now approaching Onga, the terminus of the Heritage Railway. Oh, it's the old Finnish engine. Ooh. Castle. Oh my god, look at that figure inside of that abandoned steam engine. Another old W carriage. Finally arrived in Tonga. Southeast coach as well. Here's the class 47 loco and we'll start to run around to, to the other end of the train. because there's something interesting I want to tell about. And over there we'll see crash site of a runaway train. Yeah, the points are just egregiously moving. But there you go, now they're fully set. points have changed. Stop! 
all roundels within the station are, have been removed, but there is one piece of trivia related to the tube. So, where you see that white poster, that is actually a, a zero marker point, which pertains to zero miles and the zero chains, which is how they measure railways in the country. And the entire tube network, even though the section between Epping and Onga is a heritage line, the tube is actually still measured from this point in Onga to this day. So basically what I mean is that the little white post there is the official starting point of the tube. 0, 0.0. There's a sign here for the Great Eastern Railway, which, of course, was the company of this region until the tube takeover um, all, all the way up to Onga in 1949. Anyway, the next train is at 3.15, and I guess we'll board now, but there are a few heritage signs, like this one, the six-ton Foden steam wagon, there's a bathroom there. Well, Thomas Biles of St. Helen's Catholic Church. Why the hell do they have a Titanic sign here? It doesn't belong here. There's the class 47 in the distance. Wait, let me go back to the Titanic sign real quick. Yeah, that really doesn't belong here. It just kills this mood. Now, major criticism I have of the Epingonga Railway is that when you actually get in or get out of the seat, it feels very tight. And because you're like, your legs are constantly glued to the frontage of the seat, yeah. which is fabric. It's a children's TV program for the young children, so it's Australian. Well, for the return journey. Cool. Any tickets, please? Lovely, thank you. Lovely, brilliant. 
There's the station sign for Onga. It used to be Roundels, but they've been removed. I know. There's a signal cabin for Onga. There's a vampire abandoned steam locomotive. Looks like the uh, Flying Scotsman, one of the siblings. Back at Northfield Station, next we view these nice crop fields. That's yeah. the old 1959 tube trains. Here's the station from the level crossing. I just think the Epping Longer Railway is pointless because it doesn't connect with Epping Station. But they have suggested to extend it down to the Epping Tube Station via Epping Glade. But I would prefer it if the tube were to extend towards Onga and Harlow instead. Here is North Wales Station. Again. I can see steam boiling from that tank engine over there. Uh, Hi, going back to Epping. Let me try that again. Hi, we're going to travel this in style. I'm going back to Epping on a very special Route Master bus. Some school in London Transport Corporate Livery. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is the last bus for Epic from here. There's the back side. Looks good. Okay, we're leaving, we're leaving. Let's go. There's, there's that a steam engine, a tank engine. And steam? Okay. A steam was king until the diesels arrived. There. That is a quote from the Thomas the Tank Engine episode, Engine of the Future. And then Stephen, after that line, says, Now there's Hugo, and everything's about to change all over again. Anyway, going back to these Root Masters, these are special. Very special London buses. One example I can think of of a route that used to operate this was the 607. Uh, that special bus between Shepherd's Bush and Uxbridge. It's now been it's now part of the Super Loop network, I think. Right, this is Steam Cat. Looks very good. Uh, to the right is the Northfield Air Force Base, and this is the M11 passing. is to the right, as well as Harlow, while this way is for Cooper Cell and Epic. Oh god, crap. He just, he just halted that bus. You're 
got nice yellow lights. Huh? Let's give the bus overall a nice look. Another route master that's bound for Shenfield. Uh, twin with Eppin, Eppingen in Germany. Okay, we're now on the roads leading into Epping Station. What is this doing? We just went right and running on that junction. Taking the train home. There's a tube station straight ahead. Thank you. 